Gentle waves break against the white sand beaches of Nicodranus, resting in the shadow of the Wild Mother's lighthouse and the sheer cliff faces surrounding, we find Ike. A lumbering turtle, but a talented arcane practitioner, inventor and enchanter. His family, partner and daughter, all work and live alongside him in their quaint seaside home. The serene nature of their surroundings is often shattered by a volley of gunfire and arcane explosions as he forever continues to experiment. He's often employed by the Clovis Concord and more secretively, the Revelry. Conflicts on the coast become ever more explosive and the strange disappearances of other inventive minds of the coast give Ike the market share. His more recent immersions of a time and space altering magic known as Dunamis New ideas coming to him in his dreams, Ike began working on a new cutting edge device that could briefly capture an object, manipulate its essence, and freeze or significantly slow the time passing around it by locking that item in stasis. All of that contained within a ball no larger than a fist. Ike at this point had kept the project completely secret even to his family. As his experiments became more predictable, he began to take risks using his new invention pocket plane inside becoming known to him as the gallery. He learned to personalise it and leave as he pleased. One normal working evening for Ike inside the gallery, only for something to go terribly wrong as his essence was torn and spliced within this strange realm. Waking in a land of ancestral curses, haunted mansions, mist shrouded moors and vengeful spirits, reborn from a mechanical monstrosity physically and emotionally sundered. The pain manifested into spirit sprouting phantasmal limbs and half of his now missing shell, put to work on the device he appeared from by one Lord Wilfred Godfroy in the land of Mordant. Pursuing the means to successfully create a magical device known only as the apparatus. This is where our story begins for the newly named creature, once Ike, now Drasil. Hello everyone and welcome back to Nathan and Deer's Guide to Everything. This is a video on creating uh, an artificer artillerist and that was a little backstory there. I hope you enjoyed that for the character I've sprouted uh, from my imagination. And this was a request from a sub, uh, Michael Edwards. Uh, so thank you very much for the request and I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump into the character creation sheet. And so, as you now know from the uh, the little story that I came up with there, a little bit of backstory, here we have Drasil. He's a reborn level 10 artificer, and this is inspired by, again, the recent book, <laughs> Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, which has all these amazing horror themes. So I thought I'd try and just test it out a little bit and use some of the new uh, darker lineages to create this character. It actually started out as just being a turtle, and then I thought, why not? Let's just use this. So this is the character sheet, but there's a lot going on here. So let me just take you through the character building process and we'll see what we've got. So taking a closer look at the reborn race, the summary here is in the land of mist, power and dread lie in the simple question, what happened to me? Um, so this Drasil character will have some kind of echoes of his previous life as this uh, beach bound, uh, cheerful turtle known as Ike, this inventive mind. Uh, and now he's a little more haunted and a little darker of a character. Um, and as this describes, death isn't always the end. The reborn exemplify this, being individuals who have died yet somehow still live. Some reborn exhibit the scars of fatal ends, their ashen flesh or bloodless veins, making it clear they've been touched by death. So in this case, Drasil, um, in what I imagined in my head was this kind of uh, gray green skinned turtle with kind of a normal tortoise's skin type, basically that kind of a reach uh, deep, green and browns um, maybe gone a little bit greyer due to the nature of him now uh, perhaps missing part of or all of one arm and missing the majority of the shell on the back and uh, you'll see why this fits perfectly for an artillerist in a few moments uh, just from what I've what I've thought of and um, so reborn sometimes have memories come back to them of their previous life whether that be a scar so in this case it could be the the scratch maybe he's got a carving into his arm or something that his kid made i'm not quite sure and reborn origins actually 
went with uh, number seven here um, and I did just pick rather than roll dice because I had a character idea in mind uh, and this is your body hosts a possessing spirit that shares its memories and replaces your missing appendages with phantasmal limbs so I think the idea here that I have perhaps it's not a completely different spirit but a spirit has been so stretched that we've lost our memories Ike's memories this is the original version of this character and I really like the idea of this apparatus uh, mystery that comes with the new domain of dread known as Mordant, of which the Dark Lord is uh, Lord Wilfred Godfroy. Uh, this trapped creature now at this point, this ghostly entity, this Dark Lord who kidnaps uh, the greatest minds from all over the world uh, and tries to get them to work on this mysterious device known as the apparatus and our body is a lifeless shell and your past a mystery uh, which i think fits perfectly in with it also with being reborn uh, we get this feature called ancestral legacy so if you replace a race with this lineage you can keep the following elements of the race which is any skill proficiencies you gain from it any climbing flying or swimming speed you gain from it so i've added a few um things after the fact to replicate me being a turtle in a, in a previous life um, just like not being able to wear armor just cause due to the body shape and things like that and uh, being able to breathe underwater although we are technically now undead so that probably doesn't matter anyway um, so I thought I'd go into a little bit more about Mordant specifically so let's have a look at that part of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft so a quick overview of uh, some more inspiration for the character basically so i had a read through this is one of my favorites from the new book uh, mordant is the domain of the haunted as i said the dark lord is wilfred godfrey the hallmarks of it are ancestral curses haunted mansions misshrouded moors and vengeful spirits as you may have guessed from the intro and i quite like the idea of this actually maybe long-term campaign discussing with your dm this could be an ancestral curse thing ike fell fell to um, or it could just be really unlucky. Vengeful spirits could be Wilfred Godfrey himself just literally purposely pulling Ike out of that life because he had a, uh, a fairly smart mind, basically, because he's a smart guy. The apparatus, uh, which is this uh, magical device that, as you can see, has caused all manner of inexplicable teleportations, the merging of living beings, duplication of souls, and strange manipulations of the mists. So in my mind i guess it would be revealed over time i would perhaps think that lord wilfred godfrey perhaps forced ike's character into this realm there were some down downsides to that obviously being spliced apart and such because he saw his creation this magical ball that ike was working on that i discussed at the start and that in my mind honestly what is it is a pokeball uh this whole character is influenced by a pokemon in fact and with being an artillerist artificer, you can summon a cannon. And my idea was that uh, this Drasil, this Ike character, could now, with his new magical capabilities of being reborn, this phantasmal stuff, could craft a ghostly cannon to a strap to his back, almost like a Blastoise or a War Turtle, if anyone's a fan of Pokemon. That was my idea. And perhaps the apparatus had something to do with this. On the less serious side of it, the apparatus could be like the PC box. Uh, for where you store all your pokemon and things like that maybe somewhere to store souls um but that's just taking it a little bit silly but it could be fun who knows could be a fun little thing to throw some pokemon references in there but perfect i think now it's time to talk more about the character itself and what we're looking to build and so as the class um, i've already made an artificer introduction video so i won't go through everything but the basic is we get lots of infusions to make our own magic items by level 10, at a heroic level, we've got a whole bunch. Um, so do your research, make sure you know what each one does. There's plenty of resources out there. Uh, there's a list on D&D Beyond. Once you've unlocked it, you'll be able to see the whole selection. Um, I've just gone for a good mix of what I thought might be necessary for a normal campaign. Obviously, this is a fake campaign I'm imagining in my mind, so I don't know what my party would be like, so this might change. Uh, but we've got Enhanced Defense as a choice. Repulsion Shield, because we're going to have a shield primarily. Uh, spell refueling ring because why would you not want more spells uh, enhanced weapon to buff up your barbarian perhaps uh, whoever's on the front lines enhanced arcane focus that's probably going to be for us unless we find something a nice magic item out in the wild and a few replicated magic items periactive wound closure for those squishy characters braces of archery perhaps for a, a rogue or a ranger 
and uh, winged boots because who doesn't want to fly? Seems straightforward. And specialist, we went for, as I said, this is an artillerist build. Thank you for the suggestion, Michael. And this is my first foray into that as well. And so artillery spells, we get a few. Uh, now we are level 10. We have access to shield, thunder wave, scorching ray, shatter, fireball, and wind wall. And we get even more elemental damage ones down the line. Ice storm, wall of fire, cone of cold, and wall of force. All by 17th level. So we are a spellcaster primarily. What it allows you to do though is to create an eldritch cannon. I covered this a little bit in a previous video as well. But this for me is going to be flavoured slightly differently. So the Eldritch Cannon for me, when I use the Flamethrower ability, I'd like to... Oh, well, I'll show you the character sheet in a minute, but I've named it Steam Eruption instead. I want to keep it kind of water-themed, as would a turtle have, you know? That's what would be in their mind. Rather than shooting fire, it shoots high-pressure steam out instead. I thought that'd be quite cool. Um, the Force Ballista, it's going to do force damage, but essentially it's just going to be a very focused uh, tube of water, basically just a cannon. That's my idea for that. And Protector, I was thinking, again, it's all based on Pokemon, really, like an Aqua Ring effect, where water kind of goes out and it has like a, a healing or a healing ability to your allies. Just a quick one, 15 foot cone is the flamethrower effect, 2d8 fire damage, which I've flavored as steam. The Force Ballista is a ranged spell attack. So any, obviously, of our enhanced focuses and things like that will all aid. You can hit a creature within 120 feet and it takes 2d8 force damage and it can be pushed a little bit as well so it all makes sense and the protector wherever the cannon is it emits a 10 foot radius of temporary hit points uh, equal to 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier which by level 10 i would hope would be 20 as an artificer uh, so ability score improvements we've doubled up in constitution for that survivability oh and uh let's just go back one page because i need to show you ability score increases out the gate because we can choose what it is now because Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and also Reborn we went with um, one to intelligence and two to constitution because I'll show you our ability score rolls in a second which were great so yeah ability score improvement level four double con and arcane firearm is our fifth level feature we can turn any wand staff or rod into an arcane firearm uh, a conduit for our destructive spells so when we use an Artificer spell, uh, it gets an extra d8 of damage for the first time you use that, essentially, which is amazing. So, Fireball gets an extra d8, uh, any damaging spell basically, as long as we channel it through our arcane firearm. So, it doesn't have to be a gun as such, which is more flavor for the character. Uh, we get tool expertise, I mean, we know what that is expertise in more tools. Flash of Genius is a fantastic ability. You can come up with a solutions under pressure when you're another creature within 30 feet of you makes an ability check or saving throw you can use your reaction to add in this case it would be five but your intelligence modifier to the roll so if you really need something in a pinch just plus five fantastic why would you not want that just pure utility pure support and it's a great addition to the squad next up we have ability score improvement and this is we went for a feat here but this is just due to the abilities scores that we actually got when i rolled them manually so again feel free to change this it's just inspiration i went for fey touched intelligence now there is no undead touch feat as far as i'm aware but i thought fey touch was quite good and so to get our intelligence to 20 this gives you a plus one it also lets you cast misty step and another spell from uh, the Divination or Enchantment School of Magic. And I went with Hex. So we have that dark energy. We wrap a creature in dark energy as we bombard it with spells. And Misty Step, one, really, really, just a useful spell. It gives us a bit more mobility. And I think it's quite indicative of the character as well. I'm thinking he can, like, pull himself into his phantasmal shell and disappear. And that's kind of what it would look like. At ninth level, we get the explosive cannon feature. Uh, cannon's damage rolls are all increased by 1d8. That's our arcane cannon, our big guy, uh, which, why would we not want that? That's fantastic. And it allows us also now to command the cannon to detonate. So it can actually move. It has legs, basically. So you can send it out into a group of foes and get it to blow up. They make a, a deck saving throw or they take 3d8 force damage. So for me, this would just be either an explosion of just kind of ghostly energies or water itself, as I mentioned in the previous one, maybe a steam explosion. And finally, magic item adept, the level 10 feature. 
We can attune up to four magic items, and I adore magic items. I probably give out too many as a DM, just so I like to see my players use them. And if we decide to craft a magic item with a rarity of common or uncommon, it takes a quarter of the normal time and costs half as much gold. So if you've got the time to actually build your own magic items, not just the infusions, actually build them, this is incredible uh, because building magic items costs a lot. But by level 10, you should have plenty of cash anyway, I guess. This halves the amount you need. Give the rest of it to your wizard to learn new spells, eh? Okay. So I believe that's it. Um, ability scores, I did a manual roll. These are the results I got. 10, 16, 18, 15, 14, and 9, which is quite strong. But I don't mind that. Again, this is just a hypothetical character. I don't plan to use it in a game as of yet. Always check with your DM how they prefer to do ability scores. But I thought 9 charisma, due to my appearance of being undead, basically, would probably be the best one to, to dump. Uh, intelligence and constitution uh, right at the top there. And description, we've got Drasil, as I mentioned here. Uh, we've got Sage, um, and it's you spend years learning the lore of the multiverse. You scoured manuscripts, studied scrolls, but I, rather than just expertise on the world, I thought expertise on a subject, in this case, at the, the school of artifice, basically. Um, we get proficiency with history, which is cool. And then we went for insight, because uh, it's useful. Uh, peer into people's souls with our creepiness. Draconic, because that is the arcane language, I thought it was quite flavourful. And Marquesian, because of where we were on the coast. So we can talk uh, to all the sailors and such in uh, the Critical Role universe, this is anyway. Okie dokie. And personal characteristics, finally. Just to give it a bit more flavour, I randomly rolled these and I liked them all, so I didn't need to change them. I like to read and memorise poetry, brings me calm, and that could be like a flashback from a previous life. Maybe when we read poems, that's what takes us back into Ike's mind, as opposed to Drasil's new one. I don't talk about the things that torment me, and I'd rather not burden others with my curse. So this could just be just how you play the character, just quite quiet and reserved, and you don't open up very often. Uh, for our ideals, uh, I went with, I'm a monster that destroys other monsters, and anything else that gets in my way. And this comes into the evil category, apparently. And I think it would just show his kind of determination to perhaps discover his old life once he finds out a little bit about it or something like that and no holds barred kind of thing if you get in his way you're gonna suffer for it he's kind of lost his patience and that could be a, a side effect of having been abused by uh, the dark lord and mordant to just work for hours and hours and hours on end or just a, a nature of this this spirit that's kind of fueling some of our abilities maybe it's them taking over and bonds uh, i keep my thoughts and discoveries in the journal my journal is my legacy i quite like this as just a uh, to kind of bounce off the poetry thing uh, maybe it comes with like a haiku or poetry every day after a day's adventuring and flaws i feel no compassion for the dead they're the lucky ones and that's quite grim but i think in this character's particular situation after he discovers what his life was like before, perhaps that's what he wants in the end, to join his family if they are dead. Who knows? Did they die at the same time? We have no idea. That'll be up to the DM. Discuss backstory like this with your DM. They'll sort everything else out for you. And finally, we'll go to the character sheet and take a look at his equipment and the infusions that I've chosen. Hopefully you guys approve. So a couple of things here. Um, I've added uh, proficiency in survival because that's what turtles get. I've added, added the Aquan language, also what turtles get, and I don't know how to add being able to breathe underwater for an hour, so just remember that kind of thing, I guess. Our proficiencies are pretty good intelligence-based for the most part, and we're actually rocking 20 intelligence and 20 con. Two stats at 20 by level 10. Fantastic. That's what we want to see. Uh, so we can create our Eldritch Cannon. Doesn't mean much to us uh, just in this text form here, but you can see We've got the Force Ballista, which in fact, I will rename that right now to Eldritch Cannon Hydro Pump. Keep it Pokemon theme, shall we? And Protector, we'll also change this as well. We'll call it the Aqua Ring. That way we've got some nice themed elements for our character. And like I said, with d, &D Beyond, you can customize anything, list it as you, whatever you want. If you've got a name for your sword, by all means, name it. So let's take a look at our, the infusions I've chosen. And this is just an example of 
this is a very selfish build I would say and we don't have any magic items from the game to kind of talk about uh, this is all just infusion so I've just filled my character with them but bear in mind as an artificer you're gonna want to buff your party not just yourself so the ones we're using currently I went with the repulsion shield to just give us a plus one to our armor class to make it an 18 well that's another thing I changed by the way Tortles get 17 flat armor that's it uh, so I, we need to increase that definitely so we went for 18 from a repulsion shield and if something hits us we can push them away spell refueling ring because we're going to be just spamming through our spells I would imagine in combat um, enhanced weapon like I said before great for somebody else in the party probably not for us because we're not really melee focused uh, but we've got an enhanced arcane focus and we just have just a rod which is our arcane focus as opposed to using materials I quite like the idea of channeling these ghostly energies through into a focus and so we've buffed that a little bit and the winged boots because that means I can fly crazy why would I, why would you not do that yeah so our characters are, are flying blasting machine basically we can leave our cannon on deck fly into the air assault things uh, with our rod or we can do the, the other way around we can stick it on the side of I'm always thinking we're on a ship for some reason but we can stick it on the side of a, of a uh, mast of a ship have them shoot down onto the decks of things stuff like that uh, I added a wand of magic detection in because I thought maybe by this level we'd have a couple of uncommon magic items um, but this is again just for flavor at this point so we have a wand of magic detection here because I didn't want to burn any spells on that to be honest spell wise for flavor we've gone for firebolt again these things would just be cast from your rod or however you want to flavor them uh, mage hand because of the spectral arm quite cool mending because we need to fix things that's what an artificer does with our intelligence fairy fire i think is quite a spooky spell you know spirits reach out and linger onto creatures so you can hit them easier um, identify always required shield we get innately uh, i went for one of the, a new spell tasha's caustic brew which is quite fun literally just chucking acid on things i chose arcane lock because maybe we want to keep our uh, the inventions we're working on are our blueprints under lock and key so we can lock something should we need blur for a bit of survivability heat metal because it's one of the most underrated spells in the game it's amazing trust me take heat metal if you have an opportunity uh, there's no save for someone that's just wearing plate armor and you're just heating them up they just take damage so amazing visibility for again utility and survivability i've already talked about misty step fly which if we were to give up the winged boots we may need this so that's why i've just picked it up just in case and you could cast it on somebody else in your party bear that in mind as well and haste for uh, supporting your team again if uh, you've got someone that makes a lot of attacks already you can haste them and they get another one rogue barbarian whatever it might be tiny servant i think is nice flavor we can just find an inanimate an animate object uh, non-magical and just it just sprouts legs i'm thinking like baby Groot from guardians of the galaxy or something but really it'd be more mechanical i think uh it's like a little it's almost find familiar uh it's kind of functions similarly i can imagine throwing a load of like spider bots under a door to research somewhere something like that uh, and they just have a strange like ghostly glow to them or something uh, and wind wall is something we got naturally Okay, so that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Whoever made it to the end of the video, thank you, uh, Michael, for the suggestion for making an artificer artillerist. I hope you like this idea that I came up with. Um, and bear in mind now with the Van Richten stuff, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, death doesn't have to be the end for your character. If you really like playing someone but you lost them in a, in a, a poorly chosen fight or something, it doesn't have to be the end. You can get some really cool adventures and really great character progression by rebuilding them as something slightly different. So don't forget to leave a like, uh, comment below if you'd like me to do a build of a different character, and I hope this helps anyone that watches. But yeah, this has been Nathan Deer's Guide to Everything, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.